Tossing Grenades at Windmills Podcast. Welcome to the Tossing Grenades at Windmills Podcast. Uh, This is a standalone episode about Joe Manchin and the things he said about the filibuster. So um, I'm going to try and do this episode um, less rambly and more like the inverted pyramid about the news. So I'll do my biggest point first, right? Everybody and their grandmother says that um, you cannot primary Joe Manchin because no other Democrat could get elected in West Virginia. Fair point. Okay, fair enough. Um, But my counter argument to attempting to primary the man is this. If we don't get H.R. 1 passed through the Senate, then the Democrats will not only lose the House in 2022, but they will lose the Senate because it doesn't matter what the math and the polls and reason says in red states. Any state that is run by a red governor it will have the election stolen by the Republican Party. This is not a, a, a speculation. This is a fact. We've seen them do it, um, and recent activity has shown that this is insanely going to happen. So if we're going to lose in 2022 and 2024 and every election going forward because we couldn't pass election reform at the federal level to cancel Jim Crow bullshit at the state level, then let's make Manchin pay for it, right? We might not be able to win with a leftist Democrat in uh West Virginia, but um, we can definitely primary him with a leftist candidate in West Virginia, especially if it's to punish him for destroying the republic. People like him and Joe Lieberman need to understand that there is a price for their behavior. Now, in, in Manchin's defense, right, why would you not? act the way he does, right? We're in a 50-50 Senate, and we have a bipartisan president who wants to reach out to the aisle, across the aisle with Republicans, even though in the last couple of days, we've had uh, the Republican National C- Congressional Committee, one of the three major pillars of the two parties, right? The, the, you've got the, the National Committee, the Senatorial Committee, and the Congressional Committee, and then arguably a fourth, which is the governor's committee or the governor's organization. Um, and one of the three biggest party apparatus of the biggest, one of the two biggest parties in the country has a little box that says if you uncheck your recurring monthly contribution, you're a defector and uh, a, 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 a traitor to leader Trump. I mean, the only word they don't use there is traitor, but they pretty much imply the word traitor, and they actually do use the word defector, and they do actually say that you will be reported to daddy the leader Trump if you don't continue to make your mandatory party quota uh, to the leader, right? They actually put that in there, and these are people who we want to reach across the aisle with and somehow... Uh, they won't even agree on infrastructure. I don't know how many of you are aware in, in hist- about history, but infrastructure is one of the four pillars of the original Republican Party. In other words, one of the things that separated the Republicans from the old Whigs and from the Democrats at the time is that Republicans wanted to invest in national infrastructure. And it's one of the things that made them popular. And it's one of the things that got them elected in 1860, right? And so the idea that Republicans are not going to work with us on any kind of an infrastructure bill unless it's exactly what they want means that they're not actually interested in governance at all. They're only interested in either power or making culture war uh, moves to get back to CA, get back in power. Power is the only thing that they are about, which means that they are not a party and a democracy. They are a, a fascist and a, a talk, a autocracy party, right? So in other words, um, we now know After, uh, uh, let me also remind my listeners about a simple fact, right? The Democrats 
that are kowtowing, I'm sorry, the Republicans that are kowtowing to Trump, every single one of them, except arguably the two senators from Georgia, every single one of these people was hunkering down, in some cases cowering behind their desks, as insurrectionist ter domestic terrorists were running around the halls like it's senior prank day in the capital of our republic, right? Their very lives were threatened. And these are the people that Manchin and Joe Biden want to be bipartisan with. These are the people who, despite the fact that their very lives were threatened, are so toxically codependent on the former guy that they have to go back to him hand in hat in hand, kneeling and kissing his feet to maintain his favor and stay in power in the party. The party of the former guy is only about power and nothing else. It is a, it is it bears no resemblance to the Republican Party of Lincoln or Eisenhower and not even Reagan. Right? They're not even really fiscal conservatives. Right, They don't even really believe in reducing the deficit or reducing federal spending or even reducing government power. Right, There's, Show me an incident where Republicans agreed to reduce government power if it didn't in some way give them power over the Democrats. Right, And the classic example of that is uh, Turtle who wants to who was all about citizens united and all about free speech and all of a sudden he's like corporations stay out of politics give us your money but otherwise shut up and and do what we want because if you do when we get back in power you're toast and meanwhile every single red state except for Kentucky which has no worry about democrats winning is reducing the ability of minorities to vote and empowering the state legislature to steal the vote from local jurisdictions or the secretary of state just in case a democrat is elected so mansion saying that he's not going to destroy the filibuster or even meaningfully tweak it a little bit like he's not he's not even willing to do 55 or 52 he might be willing to do a talking filibuster maybe but Manchin wants his 60 vote filibuster and he has he has the power to do it unless we start getting creative and you know applying the 14th amendment on insurrectionists to remove a few people to get a minor a, a majority that can pass bills without him and uh, I don't think Biden's willing to do that. So for anybody who's on the left of the Democratic Party or anybody who's a pragmatist who understands that power must be applied to be meaningful, um, there's no reason not to primary him, right? Because if we don't work to primary mansion, what do we got on the tool belt, right? We have bribery. We could theoretically bribe him with so much, you know, a trillion dollars of infrastructure for West Virginia alone, right? You talk about a bridge to nowhere. We could, you know, theoretically have um, uh, uh, Jetsons-style automated highways for everywhere in, in uh, West Virginia. But the point is that Schumer, even though he has moved slightly to the left, and Pelosi, even though she is more the most competent of the three major leaders between Biden and Schumer and her, um, the fact is that none of them are going to work against Manchin because he's their buddy. And at the, at the end of the day, all three of them are centrists, right? So if anybody is going to put pressure on Manchin to save the republic, it's got to be a primary, Right. And, and uh, again, I want to reiterate all the all the, the, the lace doily Democrats and the limousine liberals and the supposed pragmatists that don't want to primary him because nobody else could get elected. Well, 
if we don't primary him out, then no Democrats are going to win anywhere in a red state. And if we rely on only blue states and purple states to try and maintain the Senate and try and maintain uh, the House, even if somehow we do manage to carve out a majority in both of those houses, it won't matter because you cannot win in the current map without a presidential. Uh, you can't win a presidential election, right? And it doesn't matter what we get in the House if the guy who controls the army in 2024 is going to send it into the House and uh, capture our legislature and put it in a camp, right? There's no point in worrying about who the senator is in West Virginia if we have a dictatorship in 2024 because we didn't pass a HR1. It's a no-brainer. This has been the Tossing Grenades at Windmills podcast. Buy my book, Have Name Will Travel, at Amazon and other markets. RedAnvilCreative.com contains all our podcasts. Copyright 2020. To fight the forces of evil!